Snake Artist features encounters with hazardous or dangerous wildlife. Bill Flowers is a trained professional. We do not encourage anyone to attempt to recreate or reenact any of these activities. No animals were harmed making these videos. This is the red-bellied black snake from Australia. It's trying to get a bit of sunshine on a very cool day. Because its scales are black, it can attract the heat and warm up. It's really not taking much notice of me and I'm not bothering it. I don't need to catch this guy for any reason at all. I can just observe him. I'm probably a little bit close, but this is a way of observing their natural behavior. It's just trying to warm up and get moving. Its eyesight is not very good probably can't even see me because I'm not moving. Once I move, then it'll pick up on that movement. The flat bellies and its scale will pick up vibrations in the ground. The sand here is very soft and loamy and it's not sending out a lot of vibrations. So I was able to sneak up very quietly on this guy. I'm not threatening it in any way. Snakes will react badly to violence or to stress. The red-bellied black snake, although it's highly venomous, is not very aggressive. It tries to get away from people. It doesn't try and bite people. I'm looking for signs of stress. If there is any stress at all, I will back off and give this guy some breathing space. What I've noticed about this red-bellied black is that it does look a bit like a tiger snake, a copperhead. It looks like so many of the snakes that we have in Australia. It isn't a leopard, a front fang snake. It's like a coral snake. Uh, it's the same family as cobras, as black mambas. They're very subtle differences. The subtle differences I notice, first of all, people would probably mistake this as a lowland copperhead because you sort of see the, the red on the side there, but the shape of the head's very, very different. It's all about the shape of the head. It's a, also the, uh, the scales. The scales on this guy, they look like they've been jet-packed with a, with a nice sheen, almost like polished like a car. Glossy scales, very, very glossy scales, very beautiful. Uh, whereas the copperhead would be much duller, more of a satin, more of a... Uh, a velvety look. This has got a really jet black gloss look. It's very beautiful. The scales are very very fine across the back there and if you look across the nape of the neck they just form this beautiful pattern. It sort of goes in a bit like that. Just the way the light's catching them and just at this moment uh, makes it it's almost an optical illusion that the eye is sort of you know seeing those shapes there. I'll sort of put that there it's almost like the Aboriginal art has what well, looks like ribs there, but that's uh, the patterns that the scales are forming there. It's a very delicate looking snake too. The cheek here uh, swells out a bit, the venom glands right in there. On a tiger snake that would so really swell out. Uh, it does look very much like a tiger snake, but here the venom glands not quite as much and it's just sort of the angle there goes up a bit more. So there's a very very subtle differences. A little frontal scale there between the eyes. Uh, again tiger snakes much wider across there. This is sort of flatter, uh, more narrow rather, a bit more like a copperhead. But again it hasn't got that gloss I mean, yeah copperheads don't have this shiny gloss, the sheen on them that uh, this black snake has. Right now the snake can't see me because I'm not moving. It can't hear me, it doesn't have ears. I'm not moving around too much so it can't feel vibrations through the ground. It sort of suspects that I'm here, its tongue's flickering, it knows that there's something around. But the survival strategy for this animal was probably just to keep still. It keeps still, let those scales suck energy from the sun, 
so when it does have to move it can move fast it's just warming up getting ready to move when it has to there's a lot of space around it the snakes not crowded in it's it can turn and go the other way freely of its own accord I'm certainly not going to stop it A couple of other things I've noticed about the black snake here is that the nose hole seems a little bit larger than a lot of the other snakes that I've seen. And on the side, the first couple of rows of scales where it starts going red, the scales are like cut in half, the half red, the half black. It's very beautiful, it's all the way down the whole side of the snake. Gorgeous pattern. She's probably going to go your way. Yeah, if I just sit move still. Back a bit. Wait, that time. There she goes. No, I might move. Yeah, good idea. She's flattening a little bit. Because it cannot see or hear or feel the vibrations when it does move, it may move blindly. And some people say that snakes chase them. Often the snake will just panic and because it can't see will sometimes go the wrong direction where the, where the humans are. But uh, this guy has noticed his mistake, he's turning around and he's going the other way. I'm going to paint the red belly black. First I go out into the wild and I sketch this wonderful animal from real life. I take that sketch back and then I start working on the painting. Very unlikely to bite. They are not that aggressive unless you really provoke them. I got sick of working indoors all the time so today here I'm going to build myself a little bush studio. I should never have an excuse not to make art. I have this idea of doing sort of a big S shape, so sort of flattened, and really put some perspective in there so you sort of can see the sides of the red bellied black. Because it's one of the things I found very beautiful was the side panels of this red bellied black. I want that to be a feature, I want the composition to sort of sweep in and end up where your eye ends up at the head of the snake. Starting to build up a good texture in the background, um, sort of, you know, sort of an abstracty background, and it's going to be a realistic snake over top of that abstract background. Uh, that's sort of what I'm aiming for. I might add a bit of white to some of the colours, knock the colours back, as you can sort of see. It's really standing out from the background. I really want it to actually to blend in. So, bits of white through the colours, I'd say, is what's needed. I decided that. It didn't look quite right. I, I popped in a bit of the tail there. That's bringing the composition together a bit more. I thought the composition was going to work fine just with the just the S, but no, it's going to have that little bit just to finish that composition off. Now the tricky bit is I didn't really sketch the tail of the red belly black, and so I sketched the hair, and I've taken some notes on the mid body. Um, I'm just going to have to guess the tail bit tapers off a bit, so this is probably a female. I don't like to work from photos. I mean, I could just go on the net and drag up a photo, but um, to me, 
making the mistakes is part of it. I love to work from real life and from my head. I don't like working from photos. I'm not a photocopier. Um, people are very skillful and they can get a photograph and they can copy it and sure that's fine for a young artist to start off that way to hone the skills but to be really creative it has to sort of like come from the mind and the environment not from a photo you're just copying a photo in a different medium to me this is going to be a painting mistakes so be it it's going to be my painting I love the way the red belly black snake just sort of laid there as I was drawing it. It was just, you know, it was very calm. I was calm. It was calm. They are deadly venomous, but I wasn't too worried considering that, you know, I've been so close to tiger snakes and brown snakes. I've been across a lot more deadlier snakes than that. It was just, you know, it was me and the snake just chilling out. That is, of course, if the snake was even aware that I was there. If it was aware that I was there, it certainly didn't perceive me as a threat. And when it did, it just moved on. It wasn't sure about me. What I gotta do is try and remember a lot of the uh, a lot of that day. I have a system for marking out scales, which seems to work for me quite well. I can usually draw a lot of snakes pretty pretty accurate without actually you know needing a photo. And the way I do it is I make up a brick wall with the um, with my pencil and I end up replacing every brick with a scale. Sun's getting low in the sky and the uh, temperature is dropping rapidly. Feels like it's even going to rain. It's been downpouring a lot lately and it's been making it really rough for me to work out here. So for the smaller delicate pieces I might take this inside, uh, have a look at my sketch pad, look at my notes from when I uh, was actually drawing this guy and go from there. It's quite early in the morning and it's a beautiful day and I so wish I was heading to my bush studio. I like the isolation to paint in, but as an artist I have to survive and that means sometimes doing things I don't particularly want to do. Today on this nice day, instead of being outdoors, I'm going indoors. I'm going to an art fair. I'm going to be painting in front of a lot of people. But I want to get this red belly black snake painting finished. So this is an opportunity to paint flat out and I just you know I just don't seem to be able to put that painting aside and work on something else. I just want to get that painting done. A lot of my friends like snakes. I hang around people who like snakes. I hang around people who love wildlife. And I often get online and talk to people online who like wildlife as well. And after a while, I just tend to forget what the uh, general public thinks. And so sometimes it's really good for me to get out to a show like this where the general public come up and they see me and see what I'm doing and they think, what a freak. Uh, it's always a good sort of reality check for me to understand what most humans still think of snakes. I've got a little sectioned off bit here and some people don't even want to come close to me. They don't even want to come near my paintings. That's how serpentine phobic some people are. They just don't like snakes. But I persevere. It's my job to try and change opinions. And I have noticed over the last 30 years opinions have changed slightly through a lot of education, for a lot of work. The job's being done that uh, slowly and surely people are coming around to not hating him so much. They see that there's a, a reason for him to be there, there's a use for him, that they are really you know, necessary for the environment. 
and so people are starting to accept them but uh, still a long way to go as I say this is a reality check for me to you know really see what uh, people just you know normal Joe Blow on the streets what they think of snakes I love snakes, yes. The red belly black snake can get to quite a big size. They can get up to six, seven feet long, well over two meters in length. They're often found around water. It's a place where they can often escape to. They seem to enjoy eating frogs and fish as much as birds and mammals and reptiles. So the water is a really good spot for these guys. As far as Australian venom snakes go, their venom toxicity is not quite as toxic as other snakes, but still dangerously venomous and should be treated with respect. <laughs> she goes. No, I might move. Yeah, no idea. This is day two of the art fair, and today I'm going to add the red paint to the red belly black snake. Uh, I've put a white under painting just to bring the red out. I want that red to really, really be out there because on the actual animal I'm just blown away by how red the actual animal is. It's just an amazing colour. In, in nature bright colours are sometimes basically saying don't eat me, I am venomous or I'm poisonous. Uh, very similar to like you know, the red back spider. We've got down here is what we call a red back spider. Now in America pretty much the same species is called the black widow because uh, the male which is a lot smaller comes mates and then she kills and she eats the male but a lot of spider species do that anyway. Here day two and I'm painting away adding the red, the brilliant bright red to the red bellied black snake and you know, this is sort of what I've been waiting for really going to enjoy this. Also adding on the highlights. Now I'm painting this scale by scale, just really enjoying the detail here. Really appreciating the actual real animal. What the real animal looks like is so much more beautiful than the painting that I'm doing. And as I'm sitting here, people either avoid me or they come up and they tell me stories about how they kill snakes. And it's a bit sad to think about how absolutely gorgeous this animal is. And I often think, here I am, northern Tasmania, it's almost like the Bible Belt of Australia. There's a lot of Christians in this area. And if they do believe in God, and they do believe that God made this scale by scale, every scale perfect, then why would they kill such a thing of beauty? If they believe their God made it, why destroy it? Can't they see it's there for a purpose? I personally believe that, you know, it's just part of nature and I think all life is sacred and all life is precious and I just wouldn't want to kill something, even if it was dog ugly, but this is absolutely beautiful, the way the, the dark scales in the back reflect the sky, it's a, it's a beautiful animal. So I'm just hoping that my presence here at the art fair will give that message out to people. Let people see that this is a beautiful animal. We have a lot of good positive comments as well. And that's really heartening to know that there are people out there that do like snakes or at least appreciate snakes. They show them respect. A lot of people come up to me and you know, congratulate me on what I do. So it's not a complete lost cause. There are some that think I'm a loony and there are others that sort of admire what I do. So I'm hoping that slowly as attitudes change, that I'm just a part of that attitude change, that we're all sort of working towards loving these animals while the habitat's still there, while they are still there, and hopefully if we get people to love these animals, they'll love the environment that they live in and care for that as well. And if we love the environment, well, that's basically what we need to survive, so it's helping us as well. Today I'm producing a bit of art about the red bellied black snake. I've been out in the wild, I've sketched this animal out in the wild. I've gone into the bush studio and I've started the painting there. I've then gone to an art fair and I started finishing off the painting. I've got it to almost finish 
but I think to really finish this work I really need to get back out into the bush. The red belly black snake is a beautiful snake. I hope that uh, during the course of this uh, episode that you've seen this snake for what it is. It's not uh, a nasty killer of human beings. It tries to keep out of people's way. It will just flee from people most of the time. It is a beautiful snake and you know, if we could just if we can just get people to see how beautiful snakes are maybe people will leave them alone. They won't try and persecute or hurt these guys. They are solar powered rat catchers. Without snakes, without this predator in the wild, if we removed them all it would upset the balance of things. They are definitely necessary for the balance. You always need predators. And us humans, being the ultimate predator, we tend to not like other predators. And yet, you know, they do us no harm, and if anything, they do humans good. We just got to treat them with respect and not fear. And that's probably the message I'm trying to get through in my artwork, in these videos. Treat these guys with respect, but don't treat them with fear. Don't treat them with hatred and see them as something that's absolutely beautiful because all snakes in their own way are very beautiful animals and once you get to see this you can really get to appreciate the whole of nature till next time see you later Yeah. Mm -hmm.